Hello everyone, how are you all doing? And welcome back to another video. And well, today I'm just gonna be talking about five invasive species here in the UK. Some general facts, footage and everything. But why not leave a like on this video? And well, if you're new here, subscribe to the channel and join me on my journey of exploring the UK's wonderful wildlife. But for now, let's get into five invasive species in the UK. To kick this list off with number five, it's gonna be the gray squirrel probably the most common one on this list as they are everywhere and well it's basically guaranteed that if you're from the UK you've seen one. So yeah it's probably quite a good chance that you've seen a grey squirrel isn't it? But some people they might think that they're native to the UK because they're so common over here but no in 1876 they were deliberately released into the UK from North America and are now a much more common sight than probably was anticipated with their silvery greyish coats and brown faces filling the tree lines and filling up our parks. But these guys since being released have had a devastating effect on our native red squirrel populations as they carry a pox virus which the native squirrels are very susceptible to and so as it's now in the country it's just wiped through and decimated our native populations but luckily there are still strongholds in northern England and on an island down in southern England where the red squirrels are being protected and are still thriving. And coming up next on the list is munjack. As I mentioned in my previous video about munjack deer, these are small sized deer, maybe they're around the size of like a goat or medium sized dog, which originally are from China and other Asian countries around that area and they were brought over to Great Britain in 1831 to be kept in collections and zoos and everything but now since escaping those collections have become quite a common sight across most parts of England and Wales and areas and they too can have quite devastating impacts on our ecosystems here as with munjacks grazing and everything they can cause serious impacts on woodlands as they can clear shrubs and prevent tree re regenerations which then affect other wildlife such as birds and butterflies as well their food sources or potential like habitat doesn't exist anymore because it's just been destroyed and eaten by these munjacks. Just like the grey squirrel the American mink comes from, well, as the name suggests, from North America. And these guys were introduced into Great Britain in 1929, not to be released into the wild, but to be used in fur farming, where their fur coats could be used on clothing and just as like decorations and everything. And these guys come from the mustelid family, which here in the UK, we have plenty of native species that belong to this family, such as otters, badgers and pine martins but since being used in fur farming in around the 1950s and 60s loads of these American minks got out into the wild and started breeding and since then the native water vole has experienced one of the most rapid and serious declines in any of the British wild mammals during the 20th century and well obviously this can be linked back to the American mink which predates on them and has just caused such a massive decline. Moving to invertebrates now, the signal crayfish is a lobster looking freshwater species which was introduced again from North America in 1975 to be farmed for food and everything here in the UK but they quickly escaped and just spread rapidly throughout Great Britain and since its arrival it's driven our native white-clawed crayfish towards extinction through competition and just the transmission of a fatal disease amongst crayfish, which is the crayfish plague. And this doesn't actually harm the signal crayfish, but to our native white-clawed crayfish, it is fatal. And well, the signal crayfish also burrows into riverbanks, which doesn't necessarily affect any of our native species or anything but it leads to higher rates of erosion or an increased flooding risk as it just destabilizes the banks of rivers and everything and so this makes the signal crayfish not only devastating and harmful to native species 
but also to our environment here in the UK and just our ecosystems. And finally, number one on our list, the wallaby. Probably, in my opinion, the most unknown species that I've mentioned so far. And, well, when you think of wallabies or kangaroos or any of those kind of animals, you don't really think of cold areas like England. You think of hot and sunny Australia, don't you? But redneck wallabies have been present in Britain for over a century, originally being brought here for zoos and private collections. However, they were quite good escape artists and so were able to get out. And it's also thought that during the Second World War, keepers and collectors intentionally released these animals as well. They had other priorities at the time, but they proved that they're quite adaptable and they were actually able to survive in the British countryside quite well. And to this day, there are still pockets of wallabies being spotted all around the UK but make sure to tune in on Saturday's episode, where I actually go in search for some wallabies here in the UK. And well, let's see if I can find one, hey? <laughs> but anyways, thank you for watching. I hope you learn a little bit more about some invasive species here in the UK. And well, I hope you enjoyed it. But for now, it's goodbye, and I'll see you in the next episode.